Hey everyone, what's going on? It's CPAT here with another Exceed commentary. And, oh man, I did not mute that audio. Let me fix that. I don't know if it'll come up in post, actually. I feel like maybe it won't. Maybe it will. Anyway, I muted it now. But this is actually going to be a post comp situation. So this was a week four pools match of Chimera Summer Bash. And this was a match between Summer Knight on red side. Looks like we're actually just going to be able to... Take a look at his, uh, or there, excuse me, I don't know uh, who were, I don't really know them too well. But we're going to be taking a look at their POV of their week four match, I believe, versus Kugoth. So Kugoth is a player that we casted, I think we casted their week one match against Mego Hunter. I don't think we've, I think we casted their week two match as well against Zane. Up against Summer Night, and Summer Night, I don't remember if I... I feel like I just... I feel like maybe I maybe I casted them once. I don't know, I casted a lot of people week one, but... Uh, yeah, I mean, it should be an interesting... I heard that this was an interesting match, so I hope it's... I hope it is. I mean, I don't see why it would be. Well, right off the bat, we see the, we see the claw come out. It's weird how we're not turning on... So... so you can turn on hidden zones, that way you don't have to do this in, like, this weird scuffed manner. But, uh, I mean, I guess they opted not to do that, or maybe they didn't, they didn't know how. Or we see Summer Knight pick out the Vega. Uh, so Summer Knight's roster, I believe, is the Claw, the Beheaded, the Platinum, and the Phonon. Uh, Kugoth also has Claw, so we could see a potential mirror match alongside Polar, Arcune, and Merkava. So again, this was a week four match, so we already know the results, although I don't quite remember them off the top of my head. Um, but this should be an interesting matchup. We have Polar Knights from Kugoth against the Claw from Vega. So both these both these guys can get some big uh, some big red numbers coming down. Vega obviously gets the bonus when he's in the corner, and Vega's kit has a whole bunch of mid speeds on him that it can do that it can do big damage, uh, especially when standing in the corner, although with the crit effects as well. Uh, Polar, of course, gets damage when the opponent is hit while on an ice space, or an on ice spike, excuse me. Gets uh, plus two power on front side, plus three power on back side. So this should definitely be an interesting matchup. Um, and I, like I said, I heard that this was a this was a cool game to watch, so I'm excited to see it. Uh, this was a week four match, I believe, as well. So I didn't actually get to cast any week four matches since I was I was away, but. Yeah, let's see what happens. So actually, we're we're gonna be able to look at Summer Night's uh, Summer Night's POV here on the Claw. Uh, has the EX Grass, but I'm not really sure it's uh, it's an EX that you like super want as Claw. Maybe you want something better. Uh, has a Cross so to get to the corner. Has a Flying Barcelona. Has the Claw Boost as well alongside a Block. I wonder what Summer Knight will choose to keep here. It looks like he's keeping one grasp. Which I don't know. Maybe I, maybe I toss away both of those. I don't know. Uh, I I tend to bulgin really aggressively though. Um, so maybe I want to bulgin like way more. But Summer Knight only chooses to mulgin two mulgins the grasp, and interestingly enough, mulgins the way the block as well. Maybe he wants that option for later. Picks up a dive and a sky high claw instead. Uh, so yeah, this is an interesting matchup because. Um, both these characters can can really hit high power values uh, with, posi with certain positionings, so it should be interesting to see. Like, um, one thing that Polar Knight can do is actually Polar Knight can kind of lock down the corners, um, put ice spikes on the corners, right? So when he does that, I mean, so Vega, while Vega, and actually that's actually what Kugat's first turn is going to be, lock down the corner. Uh, so, like, so Vega's moves all do have a uh, close movement on them, right? So Vega starts in the corner, but he does stay in the corner. Uh, but but if Polar Knight's able to outspeed, then he can he can put the he put a real hurt on Vega uh, with the plus two power in the corner. Uh, so it'll be interesting to see how Vega dances around the ice spikes because in a lot of cases. You really don't want to be standing on those ice spikes, but I think for Vega it might still be worth it to to attempt to stand on those ice spikes, just because Vega is a character that can uh, get out of those corners really easily with the movement. It's just that whether Polar will allow that to happen, because a lot of Vega's cards are pretty slow. 
Uh, especially if Polar's close, right? So if Polar's far away, at least Vega has RCF, which can be like a speed 6 or speed 7 move. But when Polar's close, really the only fast option that Vega has in the corner is a speed 6 critical Scarlet Terror. I'm not sure if that's good enough. We're actually just going to see Vega initiate a dive here. Um, this is pretty aggressive. There's not really a whole lot that Vega represents. Usually you see a Vega like try to run to the corner, but... No, we're actually just going to see the dive come out. It's met with the Polar Plow. So the dive will go first. We'll hit for 5. Polar Plow not stunned. Uh, and Polar Plow will just hit back for 5. And close 3. Polar Plow is basically Polar Knight's full, full board sweep option. And then, of course, as uh, Polar Knight's UA states, Polar Knight must place an Ice Spike down uh, in the range of the opponent. Now, for, funnily enough, this becomes optional on backside, but on front side, it is mandatory. Uh, so Polar actually decides actually similar to what similar to what kind of strategy we were thinking of which is locking down both the corners with the ice spikes uh, maybe forcing maybe convincing vega to not stay uh stay so close or so, to not stay uh, too far away and sand those corners uh it's like polar and i prepared it's, it's actually kind of interesting because i can't really see the uh, hand size all too well something that I think yeah I mean that's just one of the issues right when you it's like when you're casting someone with someone else watching like you can't really uh, you can't control the camera obviously so you can't really look at things that you want to look at but I'll try I'll try my hardest to do this uh, to do this game justice I mean, an interesting play here would be like a retrieve spending the claw and putting the claw in play it's like actually exactly what's going to happen. Wow, I'm a genius. So yeah, uh, Retrieve says move three. Uh, if you move past the opponent, put a continuous boost into play. Put into play means that it is free. Uh, so if you spend the claw, then you get the claw back in. Uh, so basically, you just get free positioning. Uh, it's just like playing... It just, it's just Actually, that's just the same thing as playing claw, uh, except you get free positioning. Out. And obviously playing claw and spending the sky high claw. Except we get free corner positioning out of it. So Vega will take the corner. When you look at the hand, we see Vega's hand isn't actually like super good. Um but has a range two grasp to work with as well. Um doesn't doesn't really have those high power options in hand yet, but does have the range two grasp to try to push Polar Knight away. Uh Polar doesn't really have too many long range options outside of the Polar Plow. And the Icicle Drop. And Icicle Drop's only a long-range option because it hits opponents on Ice Spike spaces. The only issue with that card in this matchup in particular, uh, as we alluded to earlier, is that Vega, while he likes to initiate strikes in the corner, uh, by the time the strike's over, or by the time he's done executing his move, Vega's no longer in that corner. Uh, so maybe that Icicle Drop might be difficult to hit. But the Polar Plot does hit. Anyway, we're going to see Polar Knight initiate a strike at range 2. Uh, almost assuredly, Vega's going to initiate uh, defend with Grasp. Unless, of course, Polar Knight is reading that and is going for a... What is that card? Uh, Icicle Drop, I think it's called. No, Icicle Drop. Um, the, the Ignore Armor option. Shovel Drop. Shovel Drop. Shovel Drop actually looks super good here. Um, or not super good, but it looks pretty good. Looks like, I mean, Sutter Knight has to go for the range 2 grasp, and yeah, it is that Shovel Drop, as we predicted. Uh, so Shovel Drop obviously beats the fast option in grasp, but loses to the mid-speed options. Like, it loses to Sky High Claw, but one of those was already spent. It loses to a uh, Pounce as well. Uh, so that's not that's not the safest option to initiate there from Gugoth, uh, because that Shovel Drop has only 6 defenses on it. But, uh, I mean, it works out for him there. Uh, furthermore, it can actually pull Vega out of the corner, which is kind of annoying. Uh, and then uh, on top of that, the claw gets stunned. So that's a really good read from Kugoth saying that, okay, you're not going to go for the pounce here. You're going to go for the range 2 grass. So obviously, we have the benefit of knowing that Summer Knight didn't have the... Have both sides have both sides of the mix up there, so the claw drops with almost no value, which kind of really sucks. Uh, Vega is a character that doesn't really have the best um, the best economy, right? So Vega Vega's resources like he wants to do so many different things, but he's not allowed to 
uh, just because the character doesn't have uh, the, the strongest like economy game, right? I mean, I mean any, it's not even that. It's just Vegas costs are like really high, or like prohibitively high if he wants to do, and thus he can't really do everything. We're just gonna see Vega initiate a range one cross here. Uh, don't know if Polar Knight will try to sniff this out with a grasp. Polar Knight doesn't. Polar Knight just opts to block, build that third gauge. Polar Knight may be looking for an early exceed here. Uh, Vega he makes some distance. And yeah, there's the early exceed from Polar. Not surprising to see. Uh, so Polar will now get plus three power if Claw is found on an ice spike uh, during hit triggers. Uh, and can... Put those ice spikes in new different places in different places. So I wonder um looks like Polar Knight is gonna be occupying both corners with the ice spikes still. Um so so basically this is gonna try to force Vega to to either like take a risk and stand that corner or to stand midboard um but not get full value out of that UA. Uh, Vega finds himself with three gauge, so can exceed in technically, um, but not too many cards in hand. Luckily, Polar at range four doesn't really have the most options, but... And on top of that, I mean, Vega has the sweep for a dive anyway. So, I mean, I don't know if Vega would go for... I don't know if Vega goes for an early exceed here. Vega just opts to prep, and I think that seems probably... Uh, more reasonable at this juncture, just with the low amount of resources that Vega had. I don't know if Vega's going to go for an exceeds. Like, there, right, so, like, there are multiple ways that Vega can spend gauge. Uh, exceed side gives you additional speed when you're in the corner as well. As On top of uh, the additional power, so you get plus three power, plus one speed on your specials and ultras. Uh, the ultras themselves, though, are very good for Vega. Like, uh, Bloody High Claw does ten damage, I think. Or does nine damage, I believe. Uh, for three gauge, and then the other one, Splendid Claw, uh, only does seven, uh, does nine when you're in the corner, but has like a huge discard effect on it. So that's one good way Vega can spend his gauge. He can obviously spend his gauge to uh, to pay for his force costs on his boosts. Uh, so it'll be interesting to see uh, what decision Summer Knight makes to spend his resources because he does have a good amount of resources already uh not down not terribly down in life uh, positioning is not fantastic but not terribly down in life at least would expect to see vega just prep again yeah there it is now it's the speed five rcf to deal with a dive if polar is gonna hard telegraph that i mean obviously uh, Polar can also play the second copy of Shovel Drop, but Shovel Drop actually misses against the RCF as well, so. And on top of that, Vega actually also drew, I always forget this option's a range 4 option, but Vega has a speed 6 range 4 option in Scarlet Terror when criticaled. See a reading come out here. Um, assuming it's going to be like a read assault, play like a spike or something. Uh, unfortunately, reading misses... Uh, I wonder if that's... I wonder if there's a green light to play a crit flying Barcelona. Take the corner as well. It just depends on what was red, right? But, like, there's a good chance that the flying Barcelona will just pop... When critical, will just pop the defenses of whatever Polar Knight's throwing, assuming that Assault was red. Vega is just going to have to cross out, and yeah, the fl crit flying Barcelona would have worked. Uh, but Vega opts to cross out, take range 7 instead. Vega will now take a turn to exceed. So obviously, like we stated earlier, plus 3 power, plus 1 speed uh, on specials and ultras when Vega initiates in the corner. Uh, I actually don't see a ton of Vega's exceed, but I think it is uh, pretty good. Uh, it's just, I don't know, at least when I play Vega, I don't exceed a whole lot, just because I, pre I prefer using those 
the gauge either for the ultras or like super aggressively for force costs. And we see we see Polar initiate a strike here at range seven. Notably, the only card that hits at range seven without gauge is that second copy of Polar Plow. Two damage. I mean five, I guess, with Claw in the corner, but I don't need two speed and loses to the known crit flying Barcelona, although can't crit it now because Vega just spent three gauge. So I'm wondering if this is a bait from Polar. Uh, we know that the Flying Barcelona will do 8 damage, and will give Vega the other corner. So I don't really like this if it's bait, unless it's like a, a dive, and it is a dive. Okay, so, so the dive will go first, Polar will go to center, and then that Flying Barcelona will fly across and then miss. So, okay. That, yeah, the dive makes complete sense there. Uh, dive would obviously get super blown up by EX Flying Barcelona. <laughs> If that was an option that Vega drew, but uh, Kugoth just took the chance that that wasn't the case. Uh, went for the regular dive instead. Now at range 3, uh, notably Vega does have a no normal in hand at this point. It is that sweep. So sweep doesn't look like a bad boost here in this juncture. Vega can also maybe spend that sweep just to retreat back to the corner. Uh, Vega values corner in this position. Uh, does, again, does have a dominant speed option in the Scarlet Terror and a mix-up option with Pounce uh, and Sky High as well. Uh, Vegas spends the Sky High to move back. I think I would have preferred spending the No Normal there, personally. Anyway, back to Polar, who's still at range 4. Uh, spent a dive, so doesn't really have... Oh, I forgot some... I always forget that... Uh, shovel drop. When I whenever whenever I talk about range four options, I always forget shovel drop. So we see the rebuild come out, draw two cards, and then remove one or more ice spikes. If you do, uh, you get to key charge your shovel drop, and then you draw an additional card for doing so. So this was going to be looking like removing one ice spike to draw four ultimately, and key charge that ice skill drop. Very very good boost. Because uh, you can really you can really just trim the fat on some of these ice spikes because you don't really need them, and you still get value out of them. Like very very good boost. And way back to Vega here. Vega does have like a fast slow up mix up here. Uh, got rid of the mid speed option and sky high claw because both of those are now down. So sky high claw would be a one nine four when critical. Obviously Vega does not have the uh, critical option yet. Uh, Vega also has a Repel Leap, but not very much to pair that with for now. So how Repel Leap works is that uh, it's it's worded like super strangely, but basically all it says is that when Vega's on backside, uh, move to any space, uh, have plus three power, plus one speed for the strike. Uh, pretty good boost, honestly. Uh, initiating Pounce is a little bit suspect when you're in the corner uh, without a critical, because it only has four defenses, so... But, um, I mean, Polar just hoping that, I mean, Claw just hoping that Polar doesn't call it out with a slow, right? With a slow option that would beat the likes of a Scarlet Terror or an RCF, right? RCF and Scarlet Terror would only be 6 power. Uh, so again, get traded with a card that has 6 defenses. So just kind of hoping uh, that the little bit extra power juice on the Pounce, which is 5 power, so total 8, uh, will be enough. And, I mean, like I said, this is a pretty scary situation for Vega, that Vega's representing, right? Um, just immense power. Uh, the Polar Knight's just a little bit too far away. Uh, Polar also down one block. Polar just goes for the Wild Swing, so, I mean, that can't be good. Yeah, that Shovel Drop's gonna get popped. Uh, this Pounce hits for eight... We'll hit for 7 after armor. We'll close 2 and has a sweep effect on it as well. Uh, saving grace for Polar is that Vega advances onto another Ice Spike. Uh, so good Ice Spike placement there from Kugoth earlier. Drops the grass from the hand with the sweep effect. Anyway, back to Polar here. Uh, Polar at range 2 does have a DP option. Doesn't do very much damage, but, I mean, it's an option. Uh, I think only two of these cards are known, so I believe the Sweep is known, and the 
RCF is known. Maybe Scarlet Terror is known as well. Uh, one particular note that you want to make sure here that Summer Knight isn't following is that you really want to be shuffling your hand basically every single turn. Looks like Polar Knight actually going to be initiating a strike here at range 2. Uh, so Polar Knight does have a DP option. Uh, could be going slow, and it is the DP. Wild Swing Focus performs really well into that DP, though, uh, because the DP cannot push the slow out of the way. So Stomp will go first. We'll hit for zero. We'll hit for one after armor. Uh, we'll gain advantage, and the focus will hit back for four. That's a super, super good wild swing there for Vega. Uh, Stomp was basically unbeatable by everything except that. Um, Vega now drawing a cheeky EX sweep on top of that. Uh, notably, EX sweep is an option that doesn't look fantastic when you're standing on top of an ice spike, but um, eight defenses can be enough, right? Into a lot of Polar's cards. So, I mean, to beat an EX sweep, Polar would need something that's eight power uh, or something that's five power at range two, which, I mean, the only thing is spike, right? So, Polar initiated another strike here. Uh, the only thing you have to be re you can't really toss out the X sweep for free because you can get second stomped and that would be incredibly sad. Um, but it is it is an option if Vega wants to take it. Uh, I mean the hand isn't looking that great outside of that. Like you can crit Scarlet Terror, I guess it's on curve, but I don't know. At that point, maybe you just wild swing instead. Looks like we are going for the crit. Scarlet there. It'll catch out a cheeky a slow, and it won't catch out that one, though. So Scarlet Terror will hit first for three. Uh, will not stun out the uh, Shovel Slam, which will hit back for... Oh, actually, there's no Ice Spike left to uh, push or pull one. So the Shovel Slam will only hit back for five. Uh, so that's not ideal for Polar. Uh, Polar really wanted to hit for 8, but unfortunately, Vega closed in on it. So I guess, in hindsight, that Scarlet Terror was actually a really sick play, uh, if not just to close in. Uh, away from the Ice Spike. And then if you remember, there was an Ice Spike there uh, at that spot, I believe, where Vega's standing, but was removed for the rebuild. So maybe that was a mistake in hindsight. Although I didn't, I don't really know what other ice spikes should have been removed there for Polar, if not that one. Anyway, Vega now has a huge health lead, eight damage, eight HP left to Polar's name, uh, with the note with the uh, lethal EX sweep option in hand for for Claw at this point. Although I think it would be known just because. Uh, actually, no. The, there's two unknown cards. I believe the mask and the sweep are both unknown. Uh, so technically that could be the EX option, but of course, uh, Summer Knight hasn't shuffled his hand, I believe. Or their hand, excuse me. Shovel Knight hasn't sh Summer Knight hasn't shuffled their hand. Very important to do that. You're literally bleeding information uh, by not shuffling your hand. So please, 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 if you're a tournament player, even if you're a casual player, just shuffle your hand all the time. I prefer personally grouping up the cards and then shuffling and then redrawing them uh, over, over just like... Uh, select, selecting all of them with the with the rectangular selection box, and then just shuffling that way. I prefer grouping, sh uh, grouping, shuffling, drawing, but just do something, please. We see the high jump come out. Uh, that is not the appropriate amount moved. Uh, so I mean, obviously this match happened two weeks ago. Uh, so we can't really do anything about it, but Vega, I believe high jump says move three and key charge if you move past the opponent, but Vega only moved two in this scenario. I don't know if they're going to be fixing it, but that is, that is a rules violation that I hope doesn't matter in the end, but I mean, obviously this, like both these players are already like eliminated from the tournament. So, I mean, it's whatever, but, but still something, something to, uh, Something to watch out there. That's why that's another reason why having a third party host is a good idea. Uh, if available, especially for the the playoff matches that are upcoming. Uh, just to make sure that rules violations like that don't don't happen. 
uh, because it's kind of sad to see. Anyway, I think Polar just prepared, so it's back to Vega here. Uh, still has the EX sweep on deck. Uh, has Ultras now, actually. That bloody high claw is 7 power on curve. Uh, only loses to Stomp or EX Cross. Really, I guess loses to Focus, but... And, like, a random EX... Actually, loses to the Block and Ultra. I always forget about Polar's Block and Ultra. Looks like Vega's going to be boosting Light. So now that uh, Sunday Claw is looking like a really good option. Uh, fares extremely well against a Block and Ultra, right? Because it's 8 power, but discards 3 cards at random. And above curve option at range seven as well at speed seven as well when EXed. Polar is gonna initiate into this though, so reminder, Polar does have a speed seven move. And so the Splendid Claw is not safe. So I mean Summer Knight has to guess whether Polar is going fast or slow here. Whether Polar's trying to contest speed with speed seven stomp, or just trying to trade with like a with the uh, with the ultra maybe, or perhaps with a focus. That sort of deal. Notably, oh no, so notably um, Polar is on backside, so that means that uh, Stomp will do 3 damage. So on front side, Stomp only does 2 damage, right, uh, when you remove the Ice Spike, but on backside it does 3 damage, so it would stun out the defenses of that EX Splendid Claw. Uh, which could be a back-breaking loss for Vega at this point. So maybe there's a world where Vega just wild swings this instead of committing the full-on Splendid Claw. Maybe there's also a world where Vega just plays Sweep. I mean, that's a relatively non-committal move. Vega can also go for a Speed 8 Bloody High Claw instead. Looks like we're going for the Sweep, and it is the Block and Ultra. Uh, so the Sweep will go first. Um, it has 6 total power. Polar has 2 armor currently, but can spend 2 Force to... Actually, pulls the Icicle Drop. That's a good pull. Um, but can spend two force to mitigate all the damage and then hit back for four. So yeah, I guess in hindsight, that sweep is probably the worst option. Uh, just because those ultras are so juicy, like the bloody high claw, speed eight, and the spiny claw, and the bloody high claw, speed eight, and will avoid this attack. Um, the spiny claw is speed six, uh, but forces Polar to spend all of his force. Uh, basically, outside of that one ultra. So maybe maybe there was merit in playing... In hindsight, there was definitely merit in playing an ultra over playing the sweep there. Uh, which I suggest at the very end, but turns out wasn't the best play. And anyway, Vega now in the corner. I mean, now can just play the EX Spundy Claw. And I'm just like, what's... F this is going to be... Like, Spundy Claw is a 1 to 2, 10, 5... When, not even when ex right? So it's 1 to 2, 11, 6 when ex Um You probably want to EX it so you don't get crossed out. And yeah, that's exactly what Vega's going to do here. And does Polar have the block now, is the question. And even if Polar has the block, I mean, at the very least, there are two Ultras in that gauge, right? So that's four forts right there for for uh force generation for the block but and then but it's just like but then what you know uh vegas still the corner i guess both players are kind of out of resources there so it's a little bit of a toss-up but vega is looking really good to win this game one I believe this ex is like super known as well uh, but who cares when you're telegraphing EXs when they're range 4, power 11, speed 6, right?
Who got to really take his time on this one? Goes for the wild swing. Is it the block? It's not the block. That is game one going to Vega. Okay, so uh, Vega wins game one. Can no longer be used by Summer Knight. Uh, Summer Knight must rely on one of their other characters. I think their other characters are the Beheaded, the Platinum, and the Phonon. Kugoth can run it back with the Polar or go with the Vega or the Arcune or the Merkava. I don't remember what characters they were using before in their previous matches, unfortunately. It's been it's been like over a month since I casted them, maybe. So it's going to be interesting to see uh, what uh, both players go for. Like I, 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 I don't know the, I don't know either of these players at all. Uh, I think both of them are relatively new players, if anything. Uh, Summer Knight going for the Platinum. I do remember casting their Platinum a week one against Taxi. I think they lost 0-2. Um, but they lost the second game only due to some wild swing luck from Taxi. It felt like to me, at least. Uh, was actually in a relatively good position to beat Taxi's Rachel, I believe, in week one. But Taxi got Taxi got like a really good one really good wild swing and then from there it was all over. Uh, just lost to a supremely crafted deck. Obviously. I don't think I'm ever gonna let that meme die. That's too funny. Anyway, I like how we can see that Summer Knight's not cheating. <laughs> Uh, because we can see his screen here. I don't know. The resolution on this video is kind of wonky, though. It doesn't... It's like, um... It's like, not quite 16.9. But it's not 4.3, either. It's like, somewhere in the middle. And we're gonna see Summer Knight bring out the Platinum. We're gonna see Noodle Boy Merkava come out from Kugoth. I think this is the first time I've seen... Merkava in this tournament, maybe? Maybe that's a lie. Maybe I cast his Merkava before, but I just can't remember. But should be an interesting matchup. Platinum is a character that I think fares well into a lot of Season 6 because she has a whole, she has a whole bunch of copies of Light. Uh, and the free boost uh, is something that I feel like a lot of Season 6 have difficulty dealing with. Rikava, of course, is a character that, that's uh, supposedly really difficult to catch with a bunch of free movement. So it should definitely be an interesting matchup. Uh, both characters are relatively low damage unless uh, Platinum gets power boosts out. Uh, Rikava's only real sources of damage are I Persistently Cling and the I Resentfully Rage, I believe the Ultra's called. Uh, and then Instant Defile, of course, but... I don't see too many Merkavas playing Instant Defile. The way it looks like Merkava's going to go first. Uh, my Mulligan strategy with Platinum a lot of times is just to keep the continuous or keep the Instant Boost and mull away your Continuous Boost so you can um, so you can Wild Boost them later. Let's see if this Platinum player goes for a similar thing. So I mean, I would 100% keep the Assault and keep the Block. Uh, looks like we're keeping the Mommy Circular as a range 4 option. Notably, Merkava's range 4 options are speed 5 and speed 6. Nope, we're, toss we're tossing that away. Keeping the sweep. Uh, but we drew a dive, so that's actually pretty decent. So, Platinum has, what, 8? 10 uh, instant boosts in our deck, and we've already drawn 3 of them. Uh, so, basically, my whole Mulligan strategy with Platinum is to try to make that... That wild boost mechanic as consistent as possible. Uh, yeah, it looks like we're just, just taking a look at Merkava's options. Those are the range four options. Merkava has coffee at speed six. Merkava has two dives, one speed five, one speed four, and Merkava has uh, that card that's two to four, three five, retreat two, breathe out. So Merkava has a lot of a lot of fast options at range four. And then of course Merkava does have cling as well. 
Okay, so Merkava gonna be initiating a strike here. This is almost assuredly a breathe out. I see a lot of breathe outs. Yeah. And breathe out dodges anything that Platinum plays, right? So Platinum's guarded option is only 1 to 5. Uh, which was actually the option that Platinum chose. I don't know why I'm acting like I couldn't see what card Platinum was playing. Uh, but I assure you I didn't look. I didn't look. But no, that breathe out comes out. will hit Merkava. will hit Platinum for 3. Platinum should probably take some damage at some point. Platinum should take damage at some point. That Cure Dot uh, Typhoon boost is actually performs relatively decently here. Even at range... I mean, range 6 is usually a little bit far. But performs relatively decently here. Uh, for Platinum. Uh, it means her range 4 moves can hit. And Platinum has Dive. She has uh, that slow guarded option that was just played. The Dream Sally. She has... Um, Mystic. Mystique Momo. Also hits. And Mommy Circular also hits as well. So she has decent options that hit at range 4. Uh, which will now hit at range 6 with additional speed. Uh, yeah, Platinum just going for the dive. Unfortunately, so every option except for the Mystique Momo would hit... Would, uh, would cause Platinum to close in. So maybe Merkava goes for a slow here to try to bait one of those out. Notably, Merkava's uh, chose to recur the Breathe Out. So does A doesn't have Gauge, but B doesn't have the Wild Swing option to, to go for here. Uh, that's one of the issues with these uh, recurring fireballs, right? Is that you're essentially blocking your wild swing from the next strike, which a lot of case, which in a lot of cases are fine, right? Because a lot of the recurring fireballs will just hit the turn afterward as well, like Hadouken will hit, right? Because you don't change range, but Breathe Out does change range, right? You go to range six, so that means that your next wild swing will basically be guaranteed to not hit when you choose to recur that card. That is a problem. Uh, with a card like I Breathe Out. I mean, it's still a good card, but that is one of the downsides to the card, for sure. Anyway, Merkava has to guess whether uh, whether Platinum's going to be moving in or not. Uh, goes for the cling on the space. Wow, that is a call out and a half. Uh, calls it out perfectly. I mean, I guess... Yeah, just called out that Platinum would move in, right? Uh, so the dive will hit first for five. Will not stun out the cling. The cling will hit back for seven. Beautifully called out there from the Merkava. I guess all of Platinum's move in options are move three. By all of them, I mean the Mami and the Dive, which were the two options that hit that move in. Uh, we're actually just going to see a second Magical Hammer boosted, funnily enough. Uh, so the second one means that things like Grasp hit here at range 1 uh, at speed 8, Cross hits at range 3, speed 7, uh, Spike still hits at speed 4. Dramatic Sammy still hits at 3, so you do have a mix-up here for Platinum. At range 3, it's a little bit unorthodox compared to the normal range 3 mix-up, but, I mean, fast slow, fast mid-speed options are still there. Could go for the slows as well. This setup can be ruined if Merkava just chooses to advance 3 uh, somewhat, and that's actually exactly what's going to happen. Notably, uh, this means that Platinum now has to spend an, uh, like a super advanced option, so an option like a Mommy Circular, would now hit at speed 6, um, but... Or like a Dramatic Sammy would hit at speed 3. But a lot of the Platinum's uh, advanced options can just get caught out by Grasp at range 1. Unfortunately. So let's see what Platinum uh, goes for here. That Dramatic Sammy that Summer Knight just mouse over will hit. But, I mean, it's still a speed 3 option at range 1 with no defenses, so pretty scary to just play outright, but... Uh, Platinum can also just backstep to range 4. Uh, spend the Assault to do so. That's not a bad option either. Looks like that's actually what we're going for here. Platinum just taking a look at, hey, uh, what options do I need to be worried about? 
says, okay, fine, I'm going to move back to range 4 anyway. Draws a focus off the top. Back to Merkava here. Now, Merkava does have the dominant speed option, I believe, at range 4, even with the Cure Dot Typhoon boost up. Uh, with the coffee shape, 3 to 6, 1, 6. I mean, only does one power, though, so can be met with basically anything defensively. Although, it does close 5 is the issue. Uh, so, those defensive options that would be coffee would be EX options. Let's see, we're going to see the line weight boosted. Plus 3 guard when this is discarded, draw 2. Um, plus 3 guard can matter, I guess. I mean... Three guard isn't a whole lot. When you EX an attack, it suddenly becomes five defenses, and that becomes more. I'm not really sure what the goal of the three guard is, though, honestly. Right, because a lot of platinum stuff will be doing like four damage ish. So I'm thinking that maybe this, like either the guard, either the guard is there to supplement an EX, or that boost is just there to. Uh, to draw two afterward. So when Platinum initiates, um, she can go up to speed six here. So actually Platinum can even go up to speed seven. Huh. I forgot about cross. Cross is a speed seven option that hits. So disregard what I said about coffee earlier. Uh, because cross is an option that hits at range four and is speed seven, which would beat the coffee. And thus is the dominant speed option. I don't know, something about um, whenever whenever boosts are at range, my, my brain just can't handle it. I don't know why. And I will seem to uh, mess up. That's why, that's why claw boosted things mess me up every single time when I'm fighting Vega. Anyway, it looks like it's going to be the dramatic Sammy is met with the eye capture and devour. So I guess the three guard mattered there gets the cross, right? So the cross will hit first, and the capture devour will hit afterward. As it stands, though, the uh, capture devour will go first. We'll hit for one, and we'll stun out the dramatic Sammy. Platinum pulls it before pull two boost. Uh, Coffee obviously gains advantage. Not that it mattered. I believe Platinum initiated anyway. Uh, and then of course Merkava draws two off the discard of the lie and wait boost. So before pull two, Ashley functionally does like almost nothing. Um, the main thing is that now, like, Merkava can't cross this combat, really. Uh, lest, uh, Merkava wishes to get pulled right back in. Uh, we're just seeing the Just Defense come out. Plus three armor, now strike after lose all armor. Uh, range one is paired with, like, Assault, I guess? I don't really know. It could be paired with the Drill Through, I guess, as well. Uh, but like that kind of that kind of shape uh, could also be a focus too. But no, it's the assault. The only problem with pairing with focus is that um, oftentimes the opponent will just respond to a just defense with their own focus, and then you're just feeling really sad, right? Because you lose your focus armor as well. As we see, the defend boosted for free. Merkava does able to yoink advantage. Takes a two for four. Takes a two for four trait to do so. Defend boost at, at range one for platinum is pretty nice. I mean, range one is generally where the majority of defense are boosted. I found so not a bad time for that boost. It's free, right? So anyway, back to Merkava here. Uh, sitting on three gauge, so both ultras are up, the Defile and the Resentfully Rage. Though I don't foresee the Resentfully Rage coming out. We're actually just going to see Merkava exceed, interestingly enough. Okay, so Merkava's exceed uh, makes it cost a resource, right? Uh, so Merkava's front side is free. Uh, the only thing you're giving up really is information. But Merkava's backside requires you to spend a gauge... Uh, to move that many spaces. So you get more control over where you want to be. Uh, but you spend a gauge to do so. So this is an interesting decision. I don't see a lot of Merkava succeed. Really. Or see Platinum prepare in response. So surely Merkava is just going to be. Backstepping four. 
Or seven. I don't foresee him going seven, though. No, we're actually just going to see superior boost instead. So now I'm really confused as to why Markov exceeded. Uh, if he wasn't going to immediately move back, maybe just for later. Thought that uh, he could afford to take the relatively low tempo action that turn uh, to use it later. Would be my guess. Okay, we're supposed to see Platinum initially with a sweep. Uh, normally into Superior, this is really sketchy, but we have Defend in place. So this is totally okay. Uh, especially with one cross now down, uh, Merkava might find it difficult to move out of the way. The good option that Merkava does have to beat the sweep would be something like an I Agitate, the 1 to 3, 5, 3, 5, hit, push, pull, X. That would be a great option here uh, to counteract the slow, but that loses a focus, right? Uh, so, like, Merkava would have to re basically read sweep to, for that to be a thing. Uh, outside of that, like, Merkava can't really dodge the sweep unless uh, he plays the second cross. But I don't really foresee Merkava playing cross here anyway, so... The sweep seems like a relatively good option. The only thing is you are giving up a light, which is kind of sad into Season 6, but hey. Sweep is still a really good combat card. Merkava responds with an EX focus into the sweep, okay? Big, big defenses here, so the sweep will go first. We'll hit 4-3 after armor. The focus will hit back for 4. Merkava will get to discard a card and then draw one. Discards the Agitate, which would have been the uh, correct option there. Uh, to avoid getting hit back, but that trade is, like, okay-ish. I guess you gave up a Superior, which is kind of sad, but... I mean, you didn't, uh, you didn't, do, you didn't lose combat at the very least, right? So discard, discards the I Agitate, draws a replacement. Platinum will Wild Boost, second defend. Both spikes now down for platinum, but platinum has uh what's that card called? Dramatic Sammy. One four two before advance, one or two, ignore armor, ignore guard. So platinum is blessed with additional spike in her deck, so seeing these spikes go on for defend isn't the saddest thing in the world. Anyway, I'm not going to lie, I can't remember who initiated the last strike. I think it was Platinum. Okay, yeah, Merkava going to spend the Persistently Cling to move to range 8. Uh, notably, nothing hits from both players here at range 8. Um, Platinum can't really dive in for free, though, because Merkava has cards that hit at range 6 that are slower than dive. Like the 1-3-4-4 uh, the four, four that he has. So can't dive in for free. Merkava can't really hit at range 8 either, though, is the issue, so, I mean, I don't really know what we're doing here, really. Uh, so, basically, like, Merkava's long-range threat is that persistent cling, right? Uh, so, you play it, face off, force the opponent to try to move in with a strike. That sort of deal. Okay, so Merkava moves back 7 and then respects up to 5. Notably, Platinum hits at range 5. She has Dream Sally, she has Mystique Momo. Both hit at range 5. Uh, looks like Merkava has like 5 cards in hand, so the respect wouldn't be the biggest deal going off, but... I mean, we have the Dream Sally in hand, might as well just strike with it. Okay. 
Dream Sally performs really well into a card. Like I, um, I move forward three. I don't. I forget what that card's called. The one to three four four. So maybe I would have preferred a respect to six instead of respect to five. Uh, just because Platinum can actually hit at five. Merkava can still hit at six, right? In fact, does Merkava even have a card that hits at five but doesn't hit six? I feel like no, right? So it's going to be the spike. Spike goes first and misses. Dream Sally will hit back for three. Uh, respect gets dropped without drawing the cards as well. A little bit sad for Merkava, but... I mean, this was all Merkava's doing, right? This, these last couple turns are all Merkava's doing. We're actually going to see the Magical Bat come out here. Minus one speed, plus five guard. Uh, turn those mid-speeds into slows. I guess they just become slower mid-speeds. I have defenses in a lot of cases, so there you go. See the instant flight come out. Before revealing the top card of your deck, advance or retreat X, where X is the card's printed power. Uh, normally, I feel like you see this boost at range 1 to pair with the I Defile, so it actually does damage. But interesting to see it here from range. I uh, wonder what attacks can get paired with that. Something like an Assault, maybe, uh, will, is basically guaranteed to hit. Uh, we'll pound him in the corner, something like a Dive, also guaranteed to hit here. Um, if you want to go a little bit risky, you can go for like a Spike, and then like... If you're going to miss, then just retreat, right? Because you, it's not like the Merkava UA where you have to pick advance or retreat before you see the top card. Uh, you see the top card first and then pick advance or retreat. So you can option select it. Platinum standing kind of in a little bit in the middle of nowhere here. Probably needs to be a little bit closer. Uh, so that run boost came at the right time. Platinum choosing range 3, interestingly enough. Uh, draws the Miracle Gene, which I think will be a fun strike for later. Don't think it performs super well here. Although with the guard, maybe it does. I didn't realize that Miracle Gene stuff was before and after. Um, so the... So the um, play of continuous boosts and the sustaining are before and after. They're, they're not actually on hit. Obviously, you would prefer to hit so you can get double value out of the boosts. Um, but with the guard, Miracle Gene's not the worst option. Obviously, you'd much rather pair it with speed, though, than guard, I think. Than minus speed guard, especially. Okay, Merkava boost, uh, don't remember what it's called. It's called Deflection, maybe? Plus one power, hit, gain, armor, equal to your power. Pretty, pretty, like, very, very strong boost, I think. Uh, just pair it with something on or above curve, and you're good to go. You're basically not, uh, not losing the trade on the next strike. Wonder if one of these boosts is good enough to tech for platinum. I don't know if platinum is like keeping the dive around as a combat option in this scenario, but 
Maybe either the instant flight or the deflection are good enough to tech. We're probably actually just gonna strike with the planet. Actually, just gonna strike with a block. It's like a weird tech. Also, text your own boost. Maybe platinum not happy with the minus one speed plus five guard boost in this scenario. So just opting to strike with the block on offense, though. Uh, you don't really see this too too often. So maybe Merkava will be fooled into, into thinking that Platinum is striking with an offensive option. Right, so Deflection like heavily wants you to play on curve or above curve. So let's see if that happens. And it's going to be the drill through, so it's going to be on curve. Uh, Merkava has to spend two force if uh, he wants to hit. Spends the, def the Defile to do so. This is going to be a five power drill through. Platinum probably replaces one of her gauge. Oh, forgot about the instant flight. I forgot about that as well. Uh, yeah, apologies. So, again, I didn't record this, so um, the resolution is not great. But hopefully, my verbalizations are enough for you guys to recognize what's going on with the board state. Anyway, uh, now Merkava doesn't have to spend force to hit. But looks like we'll choose to do so anyway. Into the block, that doesn't make any sense. So Merkava spent two four, so this is now a five power drill through. Um, Platinum spending a card from hand instead of a card from gauge. Fine, I guess, whatever. Platinum now reveals plus two power. Standing at range one, that range one dive is a pretty cheeky option. Uh, why is, oh, okay, never mind, the cross was the, the cross is the deck, I'm like, why is the, because I usually play with my deck on the left side, so I'm like, why is Rampage revealed on top of the deck, but no, it's the, the decks are on the right side for both these players. Okay, plus two power is pretty great, um, dive is a cute option that you can strike with at range one here, you just saw your opponent drop a defile. Um, so it depends on whether you think they'd be cheeky enough to, like, respond with a grasp or something. But a 174 dive is, at range 1, it's pretty cheeky. Never mind, it's actually Merkava's turn, I forgot. Uh, Merkava's gonna revert, and then, I'm assuming, prep. Oh no, Merkava's gonna advance 3. Uh, looked like Merkava drew one extra card there. Right? Like, Merkava should just have a cross in hand and not that last card. Did I, did I miss something? I feel like, okay, yeah, no. Okay, Merkava puts that card back on top of their deck. Okay, game state resolved. Back to Platinum here. Um, it just feels like anything Platinum is going to initiate with is going to get met with the defensive cross. So probably shouldn't initiate here. I shouldn't waste the plus two power. Actually, no. Merca so Platinum does have a speed six option at range three, except both of them are down. It's the Cure Dot Typhoon. So yeah, anything that Platinum initiates with is just going to get met with a cross. Platinum can exceed. Uh... Plan Rixie, we don't see a whole lot. Actually, I feel like I saw someone I exceed before too. Uh, so basically, you get just you just get like extra boosts. Uh, in that you can sustain a boost at the end of it, at during cleanup. Uh, then during overdrive, your overdrive triggers, you can like play a continuous boost or something. I don't remember. I think it's like you get to be like Renea for a turn or something. Um, but we do see a light there. The light could be really good. So, but, oh, the, only, the only issue is uh, we can't pair that with the Miracle Gene anymore. We can pair with a dive to uh, attempt to catch the cross. The good thing is Merkava does have three gauge though, so can play a speed eight, I defile if he so wants. Uh, I believe only one has been discarded, so that's something to watch out for if you're Platinum. Yeah, I'm not really going to lie. I don't really remember how... I'm actually going to look it up. I don't remember how Platinum 
uh, exceed side works. I think it's like the overdrive triggers that you can play a boost. We're probably going to initiate a strike. Uh, range 3, range 3 mix up into Fierce. Uh, looking at this discard, basically all the options are up. Range 3 mix up plus speed 8 to file. Platinum is going for a block. It's going to be the cross, actually. The offensive cross to just get out of there. So I'm just going to look up what Platinum succeed side does. Uh, so the overdrive allows you to play a continuous boost that you discarded from the overdrive and then you can sustain any boost instead of the one you just wild swing unfortunately platinum's at range six so it's going to be very difficult to get value out of this on top of that platinum didn't even put Three. I didn't even recognize but Platinum didn't even put three continuous boosts in the overdrive area because she didn't have them. So this is going to get super wasted. Okay, Platinum replaces the Fierce with a Light. Now checking her own discard. Very important to do so. Not enough players do this often. As often as they should. We plan to standing at range 6, so we're going to have to move up at some point. Spends the Miracle Gene to move 2. Moving to range 4, where Platinum has more options that hit. Nolly Mercado does not have the speed 8 option available with only 3 gauge, but does have second coffee at speed 6. Uh, Platinum can go up to speed 7, however, at range 4, with one light boost in play. Okay, Platinum. I think Mercado just prepped. Platinum going to boost that magical boomerang. Recur. Uh, the attack to the top of the deck. Uh, and instead of get instead of building a gauge on the strike, Platinum will draw a card. Okay, Platinum initiating here with a light. Uh, so I guess the only thing Merkava's to guess is whether Platinum is moving in or not. What is that Miracle Gene doing out? Sorry, I was looking elsewhere for a second. What is that Miracle Gene doing out? Is that the top of the... I think that's the top of the discard. I just don't know what's doing out there in the middle of nowhere.
No, I really don't know what's happening. Why are we pulling out these boosts? Not even these boosts, these cards. Okay, now they're going back. Now that one's going back. Where'd the magical hammer go? Oh, they're fixing game state. Apparently they... It looks like they screwed it up somehow? Did Platinum perform an additional overdrive trigger? I have no idea what's happening. Well, I guess I could like unmute the video, but at the same time I'm not going to. Wait, no. Now they're... Now they're doing something else. I have no idea what's happening. Uh, maybe, maybe I should have, you know what, maybe what I'll do next time? Instead of watching the video like this, maybe it would be better if I just record the screen, so that way I can go at like two times speed, because we've been here for a bit, I don't really have very much to say. I'm not gonna lie, my attentions are kind of like a little bit elsewhere as well, so maybe that'll be the solution, is instead of just going for the raw video and it's gonna be dive in a block five power dive incoming uh platinum will draw one and then put that dive back on top of the deck where it can be wild boosted to um to sustain the sweep okay recover looks like he's gonna spend two gains to take no damage here Nope, takes it back. But yeah, that might be a good idea. It'll for post comes. So we draw one, that dive goes back on top of the deck. Then the dive can get wild boosted, but Platinum can just uh sustain another boost because she's exceeded currently. We'll sustain the light. It is Merkava's turn here. Merkava if, uh, will be soon facing the barrel. Facing down the barrel of a plus four speed. And here it is. Overdrive trigger goes off. Light go Second light comes into play. We now have plus four speed at range one. We boost magical missile. Maybe hope to draw, draw the second dramatic Sammy. Uh, and that dramatic Sammy... Will will basically always hit because it's gonna be speed eight. Can boost some fierce, uh, make this next assault trade up better. Those are basically the two options I see. I think there's a dramatic Sammy left in the deck. Maybe that might be worth going for. No, we're actually just going to be striking with the plus four power. Plus four speed. No additional power. Just an assault. I don't know. It feels like a little bit of a waste. Feels like maybe we could have extracted more value out of the plus four speed here. If we're platinum. But Summer Knight says no. Uh, advantage is good enough for this plus four speed. Maybe I'm wrong and there is no uh, dramatic Sammy left in the deck though. Uh, dramatic Sammy, Dramatic Sammy. No, there's one left in the deck. Merkava going for the Wild Swing. Actually, the last card in the deck. Merkava then takes it back. Oh, no. Merkava just picked up the whole deck. Okay. Merkava, Wild Swing's block... I don't know, plus four speed wasted, but at least it's an advantage into a block. I'm sure Merkava will just replace the block and take nothing. Yep, exactly what happens. Platinum gains advantage. Doesn't 
Doesn't really have the best looking hand afterward. Only a Grasp and a Happy Magica. Maybe an Astral is in order to finish this game off. That'd be fun. The Shining Layered Force, 2953 before push or pull 2. That would be a fun way to close out a game. Notably, Astrals are unparryable because Season 6 does not have parry outside of Gordo, so Astrals are unparryable in this season. Just a prepare action coming out from Platinum, however. Miracle Gene can be a decent way to close out a game as well. Take a look at that. Uh, only three power, but obviously you can pop fierces on that. You can pop a fierce and a light, and then suddenly you have a wave of the warrior for the next strike as well. You see second just defense come out, plus three armor now strike. Surely this just gets met with a focus from platinum though. Or the happy magica even, which is another focus like. Uh, the only issue with the Happy Magic is that if it's an Eye Resentfully Rage, then that's a problem. It's actually going to be the Eye Rampage. So the Eye Rampage beats the Focus but loses to the Happy Magica. The Happy the Eye Resentfully Rage beats the Happy Magic but loses to the Focus. So I guess just a mix-up called wrong there by myself and Summer Knight. Focus will miss, however, draw a card. Uh, only three cards left in Platinum Sec, so... Should probably be counting those before deciding to wild boost. Summer Knight not looking to wild boost at all? Question mark. I'm going for the reshuffle action, picking up that shine lane first. Notably, shine layered force does work in this scenario, uh, with the before tree two boosted. The shine layered force would hit because it has a, a pull two. Merkava says, "Nope, not dealing with that. Let me move back to range seven with the UA, of course." Let's see if Platinum thinks that th thinks whether this is a viable endgame plan or not. Both blocks are down. Platinum would need to move to range 2 for this uh, Shining Laird Force to hit from this current board state, however. So that would be an expenditure of 5 Force. That's pretty expensive. Platinum prepares. No burst. So we're keeping that shiny layered force. Wonder Merkava will watch when we get rid of this plus two speed before treat two boost. Poor man tech it. No, Merkava's just gonna prep. Back to Platinum here. Uh, does that actually change anything? Plus one to two range, plus two, plus one speed. That means range six attacks hit for Platinum. So yeah, 
now I think Merkava just strikes with a card from hand that doesn't move him. Right? Because nothing hits for Platinum at range 7, and now you've committed, now you've forced Platinum to commit an additional boost, a good one too, in the Magical Gat Hammer. This is a big win for Merkava, I think. Big resource win. Right? I, just to be clear, I'm almost positive nothing hits here for Platinum. Um, because plus 1 to 2 range, so before retreat 2 means Platinum goes to range 8. Plus 1 to 2 range means that range 6 attacks hit for Platinum. Platinum does not have a range 6 attack. Please just, um, strike with the card from hand, Merkava, that doesn't move you. Strike with the Kling. Kling even returns to your hand, right? Strike with, um, strike with that. You can even strike with a cling, put it at range 8, and then force the Platinum to have a before advance card. Which, I mean, Platinum does have, but you force them to spend it. That seems like a pretty good idea, actually. And, of course, the cling returns to hand when it misses on an after, so... Okay, uh, sorry. Kind of missed this, but, um... Wait, why Why was this paired with a reading? Just for hand info, I guess? Get rid of the grasp? I don't know. Whatever. I mean, reading, reading not necessarily there. We already determined that Platinum was not going to hit with anything. Platinum finally pulls an instant boost, so can't boost that. It's the cross as well, which would be lovely for Platinum to have right now. Yeah, so far the Merkava able to zone away from Platinum whenever she builds up a scary suite of boosts. Okay, and here comes the big expenditure of force for Platinum to finally move into range. Spends four force to move to range four. Range four, of course, being a range where that Shining Laird force does hit. Both blocks down for Merkava. Merkava can outspeed it, however. Um, but outspeeds it with coffee, which actually loses anyway. We see Respect come out. Respect to two. Range 2 is a range where Shining Laird Force misses. Unless, of course, it's met by a focus.
Okay. Platinum says, nope, don't want you to have to the uh, two cards. Let me strike into this. Kava still has the dominant speed option with Defile. Just depends on when Merkava wants to finally pull the trigger on that. Because uh, a lot of players will be initiating slows into Merkava to try to trade with that dominant speed option. Okay, it's the Miracle Gene, it's the Resentfully Rage. The Miracle Gene is like a really risky option here. I don't know if I like Miracle Gene, just lost to too many things. Uh, now you also give up your Shining Laird Force Swin Con. Sorry, if you couldn't tell, I, I, I didn't remember what was played in combat there for by Platinum. Resentfully Rage is pretty risky though as well, though. although less risky when you have the Dominant Speed option, right? So is basically you're playing like a fast mid-speed uh, mix-up there for Merkava. And Platinum just kind of played an option that lost to both the fast and the mid speed, uh, so like, not the not the prettiest looking option there, at speed four from Platinum. Uh, tosses all the gauge for it, and yeah, I mean this game is basically over now, right? Like I, I no longer see the win con for Platinum. The win con for Platinum is going to be string like three or four. Random combats together. Okay, Platinum preps. I think Merkava prepped somewhere along the line as well. Back to Merkava. Merkava at range 5, Merkava does have range options, Platinum does have options at range 5, of course, like I've said before. Sorry, I feel like I'm talking way less during this uh, second game than I was during the, fourth, the, during the first, but I will say this, uh, this game, both players are playing kind of slowly. So I feel like I just don't have a lot to say. I mean, this game, honestly, I feel like it's already over for the most part. Um, and I'm not getting the not getting the high octane gaming yet. I'm assuming that's going to be in game three. So stick around for that. Uh, but this game, I don't know. It's <laughs> this. Is, I'm not gonna lie. This game is just whatever. I'm just I'm just waiting on the game three. I'm assuming that the game three will come out. Given this uh, board state, Platinum just uh, really swinging for the fences there with a speed four miracle gene. I mean, I guess it beats Spike, but doesn't beat the uh, mid speed of I Resentfully Rage. Receives second deflection boosted. Uh, notably, deflection is on I Rampage, which is one of the speed range 5 options for Merkava. Uh, 
Uh, so what range five options are left? So essentially, we saw there. Um, Platinum looking very clearly looking to read something this turn. Uh, wanted to read like a diver and assault. Play a spike. Seems all right. Read dive. Get rid of the second reading. I believe there's one dive left in the deck. And I mean, like I said, a platinum needs to string like three or four combats together. Um, and that's one way to do it. Platinum can, in theory, kind of snowball with her wild boost mechanic if she gets lucky. I believe uh, Merkava is down both tech hits as well. The reading fails, however, then. I think Platinum could be in a little bit more trouble. You can see the reading dive play sweep. Actually pays out. Okay. Uh, Markava getting a little bit too comfortable there. I think only had like maybe a couple cards left in deck. Five in hand. And got red as a result. Second Iris definitely rage drops. Mystique Momo gets boosted before pull two. Okay, that's something. Helps break the speed curve a little bit. Although in this position at range 2 is effective. Only effective plus 1 speed. Not plus 2. And of course Merkava can just play focus to no sell the pull. Anyway, back to Merkava here. Merkava with the mix-up. Mix-up to three. Into a range three mix-up situation. Uh, before pull two, Grasp is going to be the dominant speed option for Platinum, which she has in hand. Notably... Focus means that both options whiff here. So, I don't know. This has to be, like, a slow for Merkava, right? I just don't know what slows are left. Is Maybe an Agitate? Yeah. Well, I think... I don't remember. I don't remember if both those are spent. Uh, can't be a cling. I don't know. Just the threat up before pull to grasp is really, really strong here. So, maybe this is bait? Platinum going for a pull to block. And it's the coffee for Merkava. It's not really what I... Maybe Merkava just wanted to bet that Platinum didn't have the grasp. Platinum did have the grasp, but chose not to play it. Played a block instead, which makes me think that Platinum thought a slug was coming out. We're going to see the madness come out. Uh, plus four power if no cards in hand. This is probably just a plus four power grasp. Um... Which looks exceptionally good where, when Platinum just wastes a block on nothing, right? Agitates were down, so it wasn't even an Agitate. That's funny. Yeah, Platinum really should not have been blocking last turn. Should have just grasped there then. Turns out uh, Kugoth just forgot. Either forgot or just played, didn't want to play around the Speed 7 Range 3 option from Platinum. But this is plus four power. Oh, it could be plus four power. I defile too, I guess. Oh, uh, is it? Is it not grasp? Maybe it's not grasp. It's focus. It's fo focus. Fine. A uh, focus will hit first for eight power, um, dealing six after armor. GG. Maybe it wasn't grasp. Uh, Happy Magicka was obviously to play around the defile, because uh, normally madness is paired with a fast option. But maybe both dives were down or something. Uh, and, like, even if you're pairing it with a fast option, right, you're, the Platinum player is not going to be super willing to to um, to dive out, right? So, totally a fine option there from Merkava going for the slow there. Uh, standing on long side of board, so didn't have to worry about getting crossed out. But Merkava takes game two over Platinum. 
so we're going to game three. Kugoth can run it back with the Polar, has the Claw or the Arcune. And Summerite, of course, can run it back with the Platinum, has the Beheaded or the Phonon for game number three. Let's see what uh, Summerite goes for here. Notably, I actually already know what Kugoth goes for because I know who wins the set. And I know that... So Kugoth had a, like, a very like weird tournament where two of his characters were went undefeated and the other two of his characters did not win a single game. Boy, Summerite going for the Phonon here. This should be exciting. And by exciting, I mean incredibly annoying to watch. Okay, we're going to see Summer Knight bring out the Phonon into the, into the, into the, dot, dot, dot. Who's it going to be? Is it going to be the Claw? Is it going to be, it's going to be the Arcune. Oh my. Uh, first time I'm seeing Arcune in this tournament so far. It's the first time I've seen Arcune in a tournament since Cal, maybe? Uh, since Cal won Junkie Shapes, the OG Junkie Shapes with Arcune in his roster. Should be a time. Phonon's mid speed options don't perform well at range 4 outside of the tuning satisfaction. Sorry, not mid speed, mid range options don't perform well. Uh, Arcune has Disjoint Union speed 5 and FP then Q at speed 5 as well. Uh, and then, of course, that Astral is a real threat, I think. So, like I, like I mentioned last game, Season 6 has no way to parry Astrals, right? So, Astrals, if they're a legitimate combat card, they are a threat. They are a real threat. And if P, then Q, or not if P, then Q, sorry. Um, N to Infinity, which is Arcunia's Astrals, we see just the strangest hand drawn here for Photon. Photon's going to have to definitely get rid of some of this, especially going first. But with the Endu Infinity, I mean, when you're Exceed Arcune, that's a 175 that when you stun the opponent, you just win the game. So that's definitely a card to watch out for. That Season 6 in general has to watch out for. Uh, just because it's an unparryable target. Unless your name is Gordo, of course. Wait, we are going to see a Mole 3. No Tuning Satisfaction in hand, but we do see an Impulsive Frustration. Um, so, like I said, alluded to earlier, Arcune does have a range 4 speed 5 option in Disjoint Union. Uh, let's see if Arcune is brave enough to play that into the Phonon mix-up, though. Because I think Phonon strikes with the, strikes with the Impulsive Frustration anyway. I, you, in theory, you can pair it with the... In theory, you can pair it with the Just Defense, but I don't think that's happening. Uh, just because uh, Phonon really needs those sweep as combat cards. We're actually just going to see the Baroque Noise boost at turn 1. So normally, you see a Phonon strike turn 1 like 100% of the time. Not in this case. We're boosting the Baroque Noise plus 1 power. After return this to hand, now draw a card. See the Forbidden Knowledge boosted from Kugoth here. Uh, I don't... So basically, I, I remember I was talking to... Probably Calvantis about this, and he's not the biggest fan of the early Forbidden Knowledge. Um, he's a fan of it later when more of your options are down, and thus, like, you don't need to... But, like, if you see five good options there, it's kind of unfortunate, right? Because you can't, you can't play all five options. Like, one of them gets sealed. 
Uh, two of them go to inaccessible areas, right? One go, one to gauge, one to overdrive. Um, and you're not building that that eighth overdrive right away. So I think that was the reasoning behind uh, behind not liking the early forbidden knowledge in the general case. I mean, obviously in specific cases it's okay. Is that artwork is super weird on permutation? I never even saw that before. But yeah, permutation. Weird card, weird weird artwork on that. Not don't really like it. By the way, forbidden knowledge boosted. So one, basically one card goes to every area. One card goes to sealed area. One card goes to hand. One card goes to deck. One card goes to gauge. One card goes to overdrive. So we're gonna see an if P then Q dropped into the overdrive, which is pretty spicy. I love that card personally. So. Uh, the card sealed gets sealed face down, so notably Arcune, uh, one of the few characters that obfuscates information from the opponent like that. Phonon can now initiate a strike with plus three power if she so chooses, and now has an EX impulsive frustration. Uh, at six power, push two. So that's looking like a safer option, obviously. Phonon can go for the riskier uh, speed 4, impulsive, although chose not to do it. Um, so I feel like you don't do it. Yeah, you don't strike with 1 if you didn't do it last turn, right? Striking with the EX here. Could be EX dive, could be EX tuning, could be EX sliding, could be EX suppressive. But I will say the speed 4 option makes the most sense to do a character like Arakune, who represents a speed 5 range 4 option, so... Let's see if Arakune can deal with this. It's a single card. It's going to be the permutation, which is a weird option, because the permutation only beats a dive, but loses to a lot of other things. Because, like, Platinum, or Phonon stuff is all push two, right? It's like the sliding and the impulsive are push twos. And so I'm shocked to see a permutation get spent here, right? Um, that's like a hard call out play, like, hard calls out dive. But the problem with hard calling out dive is that you just have to spend three fourths on it anyway. Uh, so it's, that's a hedge I'm not the biggest fan of from the Arcune player in that scenario. I mean, obviously, we have the benefit of knowing exactly what Phonon plays at all times, so I guess it's easier just to make that kind of claim, but still. Wait, anyway, that's a six power impulsive, frustra uh, impulsive frustration pushing Arcune to range six. Yeah, I would have much preferred Arcune to um, play the sweep like. It is. It is not Phonon's turn. Did Arcune do something and I missed it? Because Impulsive Frustration does not get you advantage. So it feels like Phonon just took two turns in a row, unless Arcune like prepped and then I missed it because the camera angle is like a little bit low and off center and all that. I hope that's not the case, because, uh, yeah. I'm going to assume Arcune took an action. I just don't know what it was. Did not catch it. You see a light boost at a range 6 for Arcune. Notably, Arcune has what F piece wise as a long range option that hits here. Uh, with enough gauge, can hit with an F of G. But it's not the case here. 
Normally, um, Phonon, when striking with plus two power, does have enough power to hit things. We see Phonon spend two force in the form of the complete servitude to move to range four, however. Moving closer into, uh, into a light boost. Notably, we do know that, uh, Phonon... So the thing about Phonon is, right, um... Only your only long range options are your specials, and they only have, they are they're only really long range on your turn when you're striking with plus two power. But we look, we see the hand of phone on, we don't see any specials, so that's why she chooses to move two, moving to range four, where Arcune can now represent a speed six dive, a speed seven, uh, what should we call it? Speed seven disjoint, speed four FPs wise. Becomes like a like a funny mid speed option there, I guess. Although I guess disjoint doesn't lose to sweeper focus anyway, I'm pretty sure. FP wise also costs two force to use in the first place. We're actually just gonna see zero vector boosted, so name a card then strike, name card invalid for both players. Uh, unfortunately they're talking in chat, so we won't actually know what's what the name card is. I guess I could have unpaused or unmuted the video just to hear what the option was, and that's probably something I definitely should have done. But what could what could be named? Like block or focus, I'm assuming, was named. Probably block. Or focus. Like just an armored option. Maybe there's a world where you name suppressive, but suppressive doesn't do a whole lot here. It's only two power. I think Phonon is happier playing suppressives on offense than defense. Uh, where she can like really power them up and get, get a big push or pull going. Oh yeah, Arcune also has Y2, huh? Y2 dash is not a card that you normally see, or that I normally expect at range 4, just because it gets way more value close to range. It's going to be the disjoint union. It's going to be the focus. Uh, so the disjoint union will hit first for one. Will not stun. Focus will miss and draw a card. The binding beatitude will return to hand. Arcune has, what, one hit trigger of adding the top card of discard to OD. And then adds the FP swise to OD as well. And then DU goes to the gauge. So Arcune already building up five of the eight required cards for overdrive as phonon draws ex sweep notably also now um wait did that focus Why does that focus engage? Focus did not hit, should not be engaged. Hopefully they fix that. Right? Photon didn't hit with the focus this game, unless I'm tripping. Photon striking with a plus one power dive here. It's really hard to call this out as a dive, right? When you're Arcune, when Phonon has so many ranged options that all hit at four. When a power with plus one power, it could be tuning, could be sliding, could be. Uh, oh, can't be impulsive anymore because EX was spent. But yeah, that focus should not be in the gauge. Right? Did fo did phone on strike with a different focus that I'm just unaware of because it's been one hour and forty five minutes? I don't know. But yeah, it's Arcune, it's very difficult to play like a focus or a sweep here. Uh, it's easier to play like an F piece wise, but F piece wise also loses, right? You need to play the perm. Uh one perm already down though, cause Arcune thought that the phone on was diving on the last time that Phonon initiated an EX, so that's 
One copy of perm is down already. Whoops. I don't know if you heard that, but I did slam my water bottle into the mic. I hope you did. I hope that didn't come through too strong. Are Kune playing a spike? Question mark. What does spike beat? Oh, it's probably a wild swing. I don't know. This spike beats nothing. I'm assuming it was a wild swing. I'm sorry. I should really be paying more attention to the video, but it's getting late. I'm getting sleepy. Hopefully, the action picks up soon. Arcune boost run. Uh, taking center. Back to phone on here. Maybe you see a sweep, uh, spike down. You initiate a range three sweep with plus two power. You're up 11 life. Want to close out the game? Other options include like a respect to one and then play an EX sweep. So she went with one cross down. Nope, we're striking with a single sweep plus two power. Can Arcune snuff this out with a dive or a spike? Or a cross, I guess, also performs alright. Perm actually would hit first against this, so that's okay-ish, I guess. I believe Phonon has not spent any assaults or spikes yet this game, though, so... This is a pure range 3 mix-up, for the most part. Mercury doesn't have a whole lot for it. It's uh, gonna get blocked. 8 power sweep can get blocked. Pretty brutal with Arcune only having 2 cards in hand. Drops the focus as well. I mean, Arcune is gonna have to spend gauge. Unless that's an ultra in hand. And Arcune spending gauge on a block is... It's not, it's not good. It's no good. You're just delaying that uh, that win con. You haven't even done any damage yet to the phone on, basically. Arcune spends two gauge. That's brutal. Still takes two damage. That's so rough. Okay, we're going to see the equals zero. Attacks at range X do not hit you. Minus one speed. The only issue with this boost is that it loses really, really hard to assault. Like, incredibly hard to assault. That's also your second AP, then Q gone. Uh, Phonon is super ahead in this matchup. So far. Uh, yeah, we'll just get met with the respect to one. Like, what's, what's Arakune gonna do about that? Can Arakune strike with that card in his hand? Will he have to wild swing? I have a feeling this game might just have to come down to attack the... Tech the respect? Sure. Fine. Denied the card draw. I've I've teched respect before. I think I tech respect at like range seven before. Not range one, but Did Arcune draw off the equal zero? Looks like not. Okay, but at least they fixed that. Okay, that's good. Oh, Summer Knight just zooming in on that card. So they fixed that game state. Uh, with only four gauge and overdrive built up so far, I'm wondering if at any point Arcune is going to have to pivot to a trick shot and to infinity plan. So we see a plus two power sweep come out here from Phonon. Does Arcune have second cross to deal with this? It's a grasp, so the grass will hit first for three, but then the sweep will hit back for eight. Oh, wait! Oh, that's sick! I forgot, I for I forgot about the I forgot about the um the range dodge in play. I just assumed that it wouldn't be a wouldn't be a factor, but the the grass push pushes sweep to three, uh, where Phonon can no longer hit due to the effect of the equals zero boost. That's a that's a big win for Arcune. <laughs> by by big win win I mean that's not a huge loss for Arcune, so that's huge. Um, but, like, I'm wondering if this Arcune is going to eventually pivot to an end to infinity plan. 
feel like they were definitely going to have to if that sweep actually hit. So we see the Baroque Noise boosted again for Blat for Phonon. Excuse me. But I wonder if that's going to be the pivot. See Defend boosted for Barakune. Platinum can strike with plus 2 power now if she wants. Plus 3 power even. Can go on curve with the Tuning Satisfaction. Okay, Phonon going to exceed. And... No, Phonon just going to take a look at that exceed. Uh, allows you to move. Uh, and always gives you plus 2 power. But gives you that uh, movement option if your opponent did not strike the turn before. Can be useful. Uh, Phonon not really... Phonon not a gauge-hungry character, so... Uh, that's one outlet for her to spend gauge. Because uh, Phonon's ultras are quite cheap, and she's a season 6 character. And these season 6 characters, they build gauge so fast, man. So we are going to see an expenditure of one gauge to exceed for Phonon. As Kugoth has his uh, ruler tool out. Okay, he's fixed it. Baroque noise gets teched. Back to Phonon here. Phonon can now retreat one and strike with an above curve. Tuning satisfaction that gains advantage at four power. Uh, that's exactly what's going to happen. Phon no Nobody Phonon must close or retreat one here. Uh, it's not optional. It's mandatory. Hopefully they're not breaking the rules here. Come on. There you go. Retreat to range four. Strike with plus two power. You get a cute little advantage chain going here. Tuning into a suppressive, something like that. See, so the Disjoint Union, which um, will not get stunned, but unfortunately will not hit since Tuning Satisfaction pushes one. So we'll get the Disjoint Union will get pushed out of the way. Phonon will then reveal a second copy to yoink advantage. Arcune takes three total damage. It'll be really that Binding Beatus you can hit with that UA now. I wonder if that's... Yeah, wow, well, just going for it. Uh, it's only speed 3, but, I mean... What's Arcone going to do against it? Both if P then Qs are down. Uh, which was a potential option against it. Assault doesn't move you far enough. Dive is... Uh, dive does, but I believe one dive is down. Cross puts you far enough away. At speed 6. Normally I'm pretty sure this is an illegal move though. Because that focus shouldn't be engaged. Yeah, okay. That's second. There's a second focus in hand. This, bi this binding beatitude is illegal. Oh, Arcune has a second um, dive like in Y2 dash to dodge it. So... Dodges the binding beatitude. Binding beatitude will at least return to hand. Uh, since it's not stunned out, Y2 dash will hit for one. And yeah, that binding beat two, there's no reason not to return to him, basically. Like, the only reason I can think of that you wouldn't want to return binding beat to the hand is if you were fighting Alice, I think. With her uh, reading on steroids. But yeah, technically, that um, I feel like that's I feel like I focus shouldn't have been engaged, right? If I'm not mis misremembering the situation. Anyway, Arcune finally gets like a good combat win in. I guess the grass was a good combat win, just didn't do very much damage. But this uh, Y2 dash uh, didn't do very much damage either. Only hit for one. Four on still at twenty five, but. Phone on reverts strikes with plus two power, I believe. 
Arcune with only 13 life to his name. Crosses out successfully at the very least. Photon will take one whole damage. Draw a card. Arcune now at range 5. Arcune has built up the prerequisite 8 gauge and overdrive to exceed. Uh, looking at the speeds, we see a 2, we see a 3, we see two fives. We see a 7, we see a 4, we see a 6, and a 0. Honestly, the speeds are fine. The speeds are looking pretty good. Just whether Arcune wants to take it or not. Ooh, Arcune going for the reshuffle. N2 Infinity is live, folks. N2 Infinity is live. And look at that powerhouse. Look at that eye. The opponent's stunned deal 99 damage. Uh, Phonon is now going to have to be super wary of keeping stray normals in hand, right? Um, because I'm assuming this Arcune wants to pair the End to Infinity with some sort of reading. So, luckily for now, Phonon doesn't have... Oh, Phonon drawing two cards, though. Uh, but now Phonon... Wait, Phonon does have... Phonon has a readable normal here. Phonon has an assault that can be read. That assault that assault's actually the only normal that can be read at range 5. Uh, but surely that's not happening. But yeah, if, you, if uh, Arcune were to like magically read assault here, which I believe there are two copies left of in the deck for Phonon, uh, read assault into N2 Infinity, this game's over. Right? Um, if that M2 Infinity whiffs, I don't think Arcune is, like, out of the game, but he's, like, basically out of the game. He needs to build three more gauge. Phonon only needs to do 13 more damage. Like, things are looking good for Phonon. So, at some point, I do believe that Arcune will pull this trigger. Wait, it's happening. It's hap- Oh! Oh! Arcune wins. Arcune steals game three with a reading into an end to an infinity, stunning Phonon, dealing 99 damage, putting her at minus 75, emphatically takes game three with the reading play. Looks like, yeah, looks like Kugath was just waiting to draw the focus before he reshuffled. Drew the focus, says, okay, I'm, I'm ready to go. Phonon says, okay, I'm not scared of the reading just yet. I'm going to draw two with the Baroque noise, but doesn't pan out. Kugoth takes us at 2-1 with the Arcune over the Phonon in relatively close fashion. I mean, that's the power of Arcune into Season 6. You can just steal games with N2 Infinity. You can just steal games with N2 Infinity um, without without that parry option available. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed the commentary. If you did, feel free to leave a like, leave a comment, leave a, a subscribe. I know the game was a little bit slow towards the uh, mid-game, but we got through it. Uh, Incredible finish here from Kugoth here, taking the set 2-1 in his favor. Obviously, we know that neither of these players made playoffs or anything, but this is definitely an interesting set to watch. Thank you to Summer Knight for providing the video for me. But until next time, thank you guys so much for watching, and we'll see you tomorrow. Actually, I think I'm going to be casting a match tomorrow. So until, the, until then, guys, take care. Bye-bye.